I'm Jeff Watson. I've handled bears for 27 years. What a good boy. Yes, you are. This summer, I'm taking my bears to Bob and Screech. I'm going to try to teach them to live in the wild on their own. I've always wanted to go to the woods, live with them. That's what I've been waiting on for years. You ready, guys? This is it. Nobody's taken captive raised bears of this age, of this species, and tried to rewild them. Come on, this is freedom, boys. This is kind of the dawn of his dream, I think. Come on. Easy, bub. I've been the mama bear for these guys for four years. They live a good life, but it's not natural. And there's something in me that wants to take them out and see if I can get these guys where they belong, in the wild. Come on! In order for Bob and Screech to survive in the wild, I'm going to have to teach them to fish. Right there. Yours. A hunt. You're supposed to chase it. The forage for different vegetation. You like that? Now you got to find it yourself. you got to pull it down. Ah, oh, there you go. I'm awakening the wild bear and these guys. Ah, ah, leave my tent alone, bud. Leave it alone. Unfortunately, that poses a greater danger for me. Give me a hug, bub. I love you. My worry, because he's the only parent I have left, and I just want to make sure that he stays safe. Yep, 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 yep. Bob, come on. There's not much chance for survival when they attack you. Do you think that you'd be doing this if mom were here? People who have accused me of living in the past, being haunted by my past, we're going to the woods because there's no reason to stay home now. <laughs> there is no book written on this. Right now, Bob and Screech and I are writing the book. I love you guys. To go out there as a human and introduce and stay with these bears, I think he's a little nutty, frankly. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know what you're in for. I don't know if I know what I'm in for. We're going to try it. Not a bug. Hey, boys. I'm going to go out. I'm going to go play. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Good boy. Go, Bob. I've raised bears and use them in commercials, television shows, a lot of educational programs, horror films. But my real interest is just interacting with them. I like spending my time with them. You're a good boy, don't you, buddy? What a good boy. Yes, you are. Nobody's taken captive raised bears of this age, of this species, and tried to rewild them. I mean, the real payoff for this is the fact that these bears could actually go into the wild, and they could make it. They could survive. You did good. Good boy. I got Bob and Screech when they were about six weeks of age. They were both on a bottle, just little things. I mean, when a, when a brown bear is born, it's about the size of a rat. You're looking at a pound, pound and a half. They actually came from a bear park in Georgia that's now shut down. A lot of people wanted them. Trainers wanted them. They wanted them for tourist attractions. Fortunately for me and for Bob and Screech, I was able to get them and change their fate. Bob and Screech are both four years old now. They're probably 700 pounds a piece, maybe seven foot tall or so. They're both brown bears, they're brothers, but they have two totally different personalities. And this is Screech. Screech is a little more apprehensive when he approaches something. Bob runs into it and asks questions later. Bob! Bob's the one always trying to get into your pocket, trying to grab your boots. Ah, 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 ah. And just seeing what he can get away with. Easy. You know, these guys are taken care of. I love them. They're my bears. They're my friends. They live well. It's not natural. And after handling bears for 27 years, I just there's something in me that wants to take bears to the wild. And we're going to go wild together, all three of us. Not, not so rough. OK? OK, buddy, I love you. Not so rough. I haven't lost my marbles. I'm fully aware of what the risks are of me going into the woods with these bears. Hey, don't you bite me. Don't you bite me. Don't bite. Bears don't like it when you don't give them what they want. And when they are used to getting things from me and I'm not going to be giving them these things, then they could harbor resentment towards me. And as a consequence, I could, you know, possibly get hurt. Can you just see the power in him? Just, just by looking at him, how thick they are and just how powerful they are. Uh, 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 uh. Hear that? So I grabbed his ears. He made a little bit of noise. So that means don't grab my ears. When they go off, you're paper mache. I don't care if you're Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is in his prime. There's not much chance for survival when they when they attack you. You know, they are the most feared predator in North America. Uh -uh, easy. You can't handle bears as long as I have without having a lot of close calls. Fortunately for me, I've never lost any fingers or toes. I had a couple hoes put in me. You just take the good with the bad. If you have to go, you know, if this works, I'm going to miss you. I have a family, and they had to be considered when I made this decision. Come here, Laura, stay with me. Let's go over here. Now, I'm a widower, but I have a daughter. I have two grandchildren. Man, all those are things you have to think about. 
I, to this day, am still known as being the bear man's daughter. I've always been the bear man's daughter, you know. Hey, isn't your dad the guy with bears? Yep, that's me, so. Let's go have fun today. Let's have some ice cream. What kind of ice cream do you want? You asking me? <laughs> My daughter, Jessica, and I have a great relationship. We're always cutting up, always poking at each other. How about a banana split, Gloria? I'm really close with my family, so leaving for this long is really going to be tough on all of us. I want some ice cream because I don't think the uh, ice cream truck makes it out to the woods. So I'm going to get my fill today. <laughs> my dad's been doing this since I was tiny, and while growing up, you know, I heard him quite often talk about how he would love to be able to do something like this. I know if anybody can do it, it's him. This is what he's good at. This is his life. Hey, mister. I know he's really excited about being able to do this, so I don't want to rain on his parade too much by telling him how worried I am, but he's kind of taking both himself and the bears out to this uncharted territory, and it's hard telling what could go on out there. Oh, my gosh. You eat like Bob and Screech. So, I mean, how far out are you? you know, are you going in a week? Are you going in a month? I, I hope to be out of here within a week. I mean, I'm not going out there to get eaten. I haven't been there. I don't know where it is exactly. I don't know what the setup is. Do you think I still have some ability with bears? I know you have ability with bears, but it's just but... kind of a big step. Look, my focus is taking Bob and Screech out there, training them to live on their own, making them independent so I can release them. I mean, getting to the wild is the ultimate goal. But just to get them out into an area, you know, 10 acres, whatever I fence in, to get them into that initially is going to be awesome. They've never roamed like that. I mean, Bob and Screech are at the age that I'm going to do it. I have to do it now. So it's... Yeah, it's gone. You ate it all? <laughs> this is the right time to do what I'm doing. Bob and Screech are both four years old now, and grizzly cubs will stay with their mother two years, three years, four years, and sometimes five years. If I'm gonna try to replicate the mother's uh, behavior and chase these guys off and rewild them, it has to be now. For me, I, I, inside, I'm excited about going. But it's kind of like people who want to climb Everest. They're excited about doing it, but sometimes I think they don't think it all the way through. I mean, people die doing it all the time, so. I'm not going to Everest. But you're going out to the woods with bears, sleeping out there. Who's watching your back when you're sleeping? What's the worst that could happen? Death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, yes. Yeah, oh, that. He kind of acts like it's no big deal taking these bears out to the wild, but I know it's a big deal. I think part of it is the fact that he has 30 years' experience doing this, so he doesn't think it's as big of a deal. Um, I think part of it also is because he's still grieving Mom's death. Do you think that you'd be doing this if Mom were here? No. When your mother was alive, it just wasn't realistic. She wouldn't want me to go. I wouldn't want to be away from her. It's. Uh... House is empty now, you're gone, she's gone. I don't see you guys that much the way it is, unfortunately, because you guys live so far away, so it's not like it's an everyday thing. So hopefully I'll, we can come out and make a few visits. You know, if I can see you guys once a month or something, it'd be nice. Right. If mom were here, it would just be a lot different. They were soulmates. They were the love of each other's lives. And so he may be operating in a stage of grief a little bit, but we need him in our lives. My plan is to take the Bob and the Screech to a very remote area in Indiana, and if we can get them to where they'll live off the land and they're avoiding people, then the ultimate goal is to remove them from there, transfer them to somewhere, possibly Alaska, possibly Canada, then I'm out of the picture, and they go on their own. My buddy Larry has offered me the use of his land, so I'm gonna scout it out today to see if it has everything necessary to sustain Bob and Screech. I need water, shelter, food sources, a good location to place a cage to get them acclimated to this environment. At one time, we had grizzly here in Indiana. According to our Department of Natural Resources, they were wiped out in the late 1800s due to hunting and extensive logging. But we still have all the resources necessary to support a healthy population. I'm really pumped about the food sources that are going to pop up here as we're rewilding these guys. I'm going to have wild strawberries, onions, mushrooms grow here. We're going to have berries coming in. So this location for me is, is perfect. At the house, I've given sweet potatoes, apples, grapes, dog food, raw chicken. They're used to eating out of a bucket. You throw the food in there, and you just deliver it to them. So out here in the habitat, Bob and Streets are gonna have to toughen up a little bit when it comes to their diet. They're gonna have to work like a wild bear. Hey there. Hey, Larry. How you doing? Good. Good to see you. I'm the property owner. I've actually known Jeff for quite a few years. I appreciate you letting me come out here. Oh, no problem. No problem at all. Jeff approached me and started talking to me about this idea and said he was interested in some remote property. Now, how much land is there all together? About 900 acres all together. Can I have access to any of the 900 that I need? Absolutely. I was at first a little bit reluctant, but the more he talked, the, the more interesting it became. You smell that bear on me, don't you? 
It's OK. All right. Jeff is a very quiet, mild-mannered guy, actually. You'd expect some big macho guy working with bears, but uh, I think his demeanor actually helps him. How long are you thinking to be back there? I don't know. I mean, if it takes me a few months, is that OK? Oh, yeah, I don't mind. I, I mean, a long time to be out here with bears. Well, <laughs> a day could be a long time to be out here with bears <laughs> if it's a bad day. Like, do you tie him up, or what are you going to be doing? No, no, it, uh, I need to put up a lot of fence, a lot of electric fence, okay. and uh, they respect that. Larry's placing a lot of trust in me. I mean, it's not every day you find somebody that will let you bring bears out to their property. All right, Larry, thank you. OK, see you later. OK, so I got to make sure my bears are contained. They don't get out and get their horses, his family, his neighbors. There's a lot on my plate here. I got to make sure that fence keeps those bears in. There's a lot of work to do to bring Bob and Screech to this land. I got to put up over a mile of electric fence. The only world Bob and Screech know is my backyard. So it's going to be incredible to see them in this new habitat. Their world's going to expand 100 times over. Appreciate you coming out today. This is a big project. It is a big project. Very big project, what you're doing. Did you put up any bear fence? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't do bear fence normally. Well, you've been talked no. into it. I have been talked into it. Yes, you are right. This fence is going to be an electric fence. So these guys are going to recognize it because they've been in a hot wire before. And I'll tell them when they get close to it, I'll say, that's hot. It's not a tall 20-foot fence with interns that come in at 45-degree angles, nothing like that. This isn't Jurassic Park. You sure this is going to hold bears? You want to come out here and spend the night with us? Once no, thanks. Ready. I'll stay in my nice little warm bed. <laughs> OK. I'll be thinking of you, but that's about it. I like camping and being out in the woods, but I'm not going to do it with bears because I don't know them. No, 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 no. I'm not fooling with bears. What's going to happen when you get these bears over here and you get them rewild? If this proves successful, then I'll probably go on, move on, and, and try it with other bears. Plenty of cubs are orphans. Every year in North America, we have orphan bear cubs. And it's usually because the mother is either killed by another bear, by a poacher. And uh, these cubs that are left are, normally have to fend for themselves and usually die. So there has to be some type of viable option to be able to take these cubs and give them a healthy life. I got a lot of concerns, but you know, I am looking forward to it. This isn't just about Bob and Screech. If I'm successful at rewilding these bears and the information and knowledge can be applied to other bears, then I, maybe I can save a few lives. About how much more we got to go? Get over a half mile, look up there. Oh, heaven. There they are. Well, they look healthy from this distance. Yeah. This is Screech, he's a little bit smaller. Yeah, Screech is a little less. Yeah, Bob. Hi, Bob. Dr. Sue has been taking care of my bears for around 12 or 13 years now, so she's the only vet that Bob and Screech have ever known. Do you see anything right there that you're concerned with at all? Bob is missing some toes on his foot. They had to be amputated due to an injury uh, when he was a cub. So you do notice a limp in that leg. He tips his foot a little bit to the inside. He keeps up fine with Screech, so I think he can adjust to the wild just fine. He's got a nice callus on it, so I don't think he knows that he's got a problem. Bob's always been able to keep up with Screech. But when we get to the new habitat, it's just going to put a lot more work on that foot than he's had to endure here at the house. I'd like you to go in if it's all right and oh, just yeah, kind of look fine. at him a little closer. I'm going to put a wire up. I won't make it hot, but I'll put a dummy wire up between you and them. Hey, guys. The purpose of the dummy wire inside the cage is to keep Bob and Screech on one side and Dr. Sue on the other side. Got to keep them separated. This is hot. It's a psychological barrier. It's not actually electrified, but the bears will recognize it as being a hot wire. All right. You feel safe with that wire? I trust you. You just say run if I'm in trouble, and I'll get out of there. OK, you're OK. I'm going to open their mouths for you and let you OK. Give me, a, give me a wide. Give me a wide, both of you. Open it up. Give me a wide, wide. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. His canines look great. I think Jeff's dream is amazing. He doesn't want them to live in captivity. He wanted to save them so he could really save a bear and give it the life that it wanted. That's a good boy. You're a good boy. I never really thought it would happen, but this is kind of the dawn of his dream, I think. What are you doing with their diet to try to prepare them for the wild? I'm changing the way I'm feeding them. I'm, I'm actually letting them forage more for their food <laughs> and trying to let them forage out here and do some free feeding. But I'm not really changing their diet. Up, 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 up. He wants my boots awful bad. I, uh... There won't be boots in the wild there. No. You know, realistically, when you compare them to wild bear, they're overweight and unfit. They're my bears. I spoil them. Got to give them a treat every now and then. They eat healthy, but they eat a few extra desserts. Right now, I don't think they could tangle with a wild bear and make it. But you're going to have them outside doing 
activities with before the, they ever yeah. encounter a bear. Yeah, so they should right. build muscle. They should become lean and strong, and then I think they're right on par with a wild bear. Good. Well, I think they're ready to go. Okay. They've done a fine job. Well, thanks. You head on out to the wild and be tough. Don't let yourself get hurt. I don't want to see you back missing parts. My concern is with you. When these guys start going wild, you're going to be out there sleeping in the dark with a wild bear looking at you maybe differently than they used to look. Right. Well, I mean, I've weighed all that out, and uh, we'll uh, cross that bridge when we come to it. But as long as they're, they're ready to go, then I'll prepare myself as much as I can. I think he's a little nutty, frankly, <laughs> to go out there as a human and introduce and stay with these bears and have to worry about having them get hungry enough that their instinct picks up and they go to him and think of him as food. You know, there are a lot of things that could happen. I'm heading out now to pick up some bread and apples for the bears. Got a bakery up here, distribution center, and that's where I get my bread. Sometimes I give them buns. I'll pick the buns up today. I give Bob and Streets a variety of foods. I give them dog food, apples, carrots, bread, and every now and then I reward them with hamburgers. I've always tried to keep my bears well fed. If their bellies are full, there's no room for me in there. When I go to the wild, I'm gonna have to try to get these guys to start foraging for food. And I don't think they're gonna like it. And they'll turn on me if I pull the food from them. And I wanna make sure that when I take them out, that they start weaning off of food, but weaning at a rate which is good for them and at a rate that's safe for me. There we are, bread store. How you doing? I'm good. I'm getting ready to go. Oh. This may be the last rack of bread I get for a while. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Just been come here for about five or six years, and everybody loves him here. We think he's adorable, and we love what he's doing with his bears. We all know him here as Jeff the Bear Man, so he's like a movie star around here. So you don't know how long you're going to be gone? However long it takes. Oh, now, I don't know how Bob and Screech are going to do. If they do well, then I'll be back soon. If they don't do so well, I'll have to stay out there longer, teach yeah. them how to, how to survive. So I'm going to be out there alone. You're going out there alone? Yeah. I'm trying to get them used to just being around me and nobody else. So. Well, what if something happens? I guess I don't come back for bread. Oh, that's not funny. Oh, no, it'll be okay. Well, Betty, I will see you when I get back. I'm going to go right. ahead and shut this for you. All right. Well, we'll definitely miss you around here. Endings are sad, and this is a potential ending, so this may be the last time I go and get bread for my bears. So, yeah, a little, a little sad to think about it, but i got to keep focused on what I'm doing. I can't let emotions get the best of me. Hey, girl. Hey, Jeff. How are you? Good. How are you? I love that they still have a picture of Brody hanging in here. Brody was by far the most famous bear I ever had. I first started getting apples from Apple Lakers, and Brody was just a cub. It was just a normal day at work, and Jeff came to pick up some apples. And he had Brody with him, and I got to hold him. And it, he was so sweet. He was sucking on my neck like a little baby. Not everyone gets to hold a bear cub. And it was, it was the highlight of my life. Whenever I take a bear cub somewhere, people love him. But Brody was special. And I think it was just the fact that he was so gentle that anybody could get near him. You know, bears bite. They claw. But Brody just acted more like a dog when he was little than any other bear I've ever had. That poster, Brody, that's a year and a half old in that picture. That was in the fall of 1996 on Walker, Texas Ranger. In the 18 years that Brody and I were together, we went to a lot of places. He was on the stage of The Tonight Show, Good Morning America. Had him in Muhammad Ali's yard. A lot of different things over the years. Yeah, I could use maybe um, three or four okay. crates. Okay. You want to help? Yep. I had the opportunity of taking Brody to wilderness areas, oftentimes for commercials and TV shows. And I enjoyed it. And Brody seemed to enjoy it. But I was trying to feed my family, trying to make my way in the world. And it was never really an option for me to take Brody to the wild or try to rewild him. By the time I was getting set financially, he was too old to release into the wild. Bob and Screech are at an age right now where they would be getting chased off by their mother and they would be able to start their lives in the wild. I feel I owe it to these guys to give it my best shot. Well, I'll see you sometime soon, right. I hope. <laughs> okay.
long time ago. <laughs> Brody was a, such an exceptional bear. He was my bear. I loved him. And I miss him. You know, memories are special for different reasons. I was young at the time. My wife was alive. My daughter was young. We were a young family. And Brody was just another addition to that young family. Leanne and I were together 22 years and just married just shy of 21. She died right before our 21st wedding anniversary. She helped me out a lot. You know, we helped each other out. And now there's a lot of pieces missing from the puzzle that we were putting together back then. I don't miss being young. I miss walking that walk together. Some people want to go back. I, I don't want to go back. And I don't, I don't, I, I had that. It's just that the ride ended too early. People have accused me of living in the past, not letting go, not moving forward, being haunted by my past. I don't think you can tell anybody how to deal with their loss and with grief. I think everybody's different. So we're going to the woods because there's no reason to stay home now. <laughs> It's strange, even I can look at a bear in the wild and it really doesn't seem to have a personality to me. It's just a bear. But you live with them and you're like, that bear has a personality. That bear just almost seems human-like, if you will. Easy, Bob. Easy, bud, easy, 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 bud. I'm talking nice about you, be nice to me, easy. I'm not saying bad things, so don't do that. If people think I'm afraid of my bears, I kinda am. I mean, they are bears. I'm not gonna stand out here and act like I don't have a great deal of respect and sometimes actual fear of them. As a handler, I've always tried to foster a relationship with these animals, and now I'm doing just the opposite. I'm trying to break that relationship, and this could prove very dangerous for me. Bear cubs, when they're chased away by their mother, they don't like that. They don't want to be chased off. It's just the natural order of things in the wild. I'm trying to knock me off the log here. Easy, bud. You know, teeter-totter me here in a second. Now, see, I have to watch. Easy, 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 easy. I got to watch him right there. Bob seems to have a little bit more of a naughty disposition. He comes up to me in the yard and starts sniffing on my boots and trying to grab my boots. I know he really wants to take me down. I can just read his body posturing. He looks like he just wants to play rough, and playing rough could lead into him getting very aggressive with me. I love you, bud. I know how you... Oh, I know you're a bear. Easy. Duck, 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 duck. You'd already ripped this jacket today. I'm gonna move uphill from you. Now, uh, the anxiety's setting in. We're here. I'm at the doorstep. I'm a skinny old man. I, I see him choking on each other, chewing on each other, and... The human body isn't meant to take punishment they dish out, even the play that they're dishing out. I mean, look at him, he's mellow. But mellow can kill you. My buddies did a great job helping me get ready for this. If things keep progressing the way they are right now, I mean, the guys are working back there, and other guys are up on the hill. So right now, it's really encouraging to realize that I could have the bears out here pretty soon. All right, guys, see these long 12-footers? You got the 12-footers, you got the 8-footers. Just start bringing these down by the stack. Grab some steel. Let's get this thing going before the weather comes in. Last thing I have to do now is put up a cage. I want the bears to have a place they feel safe in when they first arrive here. Kind of lift it up just a little bit so I can get this in. Uh, over on this side, guys. It's kind of strange setting this cage up in the woods. I've set it up in convention centers. I've built cages like this multiple times. I've actually set cages up like this in arenas all over the country when I took Brody around. Why? Uh, I did a few TV shows in New York early in the morning for the Today Show. And here's what I heard as I'm walking a 400-pound bear down the street. I've seen a lot of things in this city, but I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> the time is here. Everything I've been working for is now happening. Really no turning back right now. I gotta keep rolling with this. Let's go. I've been preparing to take Bob and Screech to the wild for some time. As part of my preparation to get the bears used to the wild, I have to spend time with them at night, something I don't do here at the house. I go to bed at night, my bears go to bed in the backyard. Hi, guys. Easy. Top, 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 don't do that. Bears in the wild can be pretty nocturnal. In the wild, they want to stay away from people. In the wild, it may be hot in the summer, so they want to be out when it's cool in the evening. So what I'm doing now is spending time with them in the dark, in the backyard, so that they are used to being with me in the dark, so they don't maul me when I go to the wild. Because if I'm out there in the woods with them, and I surprise one of them in the dark, it could be curtains for me. I'm having a hard time seeing them now. 
my eyes adjust. Easy, bud. I don't even know who you are. Top, 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 don't. I don't know who you are. It's kind of strange if you don't know which one it is coming at you. You just hear the breathing. I don't like that at all. OK. Who's that, Bob? That's Screech. What did you run him off the log? Easy, bud. Easy, easy. As a bear guy, you can't avoid questions about Timothy Treadwell, who lived with bears in Katmai National Park in Alaska, and he died that way. They killed him. A self-taught bear expert who once called Alaska's brown bears harmless party animals is dead after a bear attack. I don't agree with everything that he did. I think he pushed the envelope. He wanted to, to be one with the bears. And I don't believe that anybody can go live with a wild bear and actually get it to accept you. I mean, if you want the bear to accept you as a bear, they fight with other bears. They hurt other bears. So being one with the bear isn't necessarily a good thing. I don't normally mess with him. Uh, 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 easy. Don't push me. Don't push. Easy. 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 It's dark. I'm a little concerned right now. So just trying to get. OK, easy. We're going to have to do this slowly. Easy. Back, back, back. Uh, uh, uh. Back, back. Timothy Treadwell proved to me that even somebody who can have a deep understanding of bears and who can live with them for years still runs the risk of dying that way. Keep coming. Well, today's the day. Now, hold on. I've been waiting for a long time to go to the woods with the bears. OK, right here. I got you. Stop. I don't know if you guys know what you're in for. I don't know if I know what I'm in for. We're going to try it. Okay. Screech is freaking. From a guy that has loaded bears up on wagons, who's put a leash on a bear and taken him to the veterinarian's office, these guys are different because I didn't spend time leash breaking. I, try, I avoided a lot of that. They're really just not used to going places. You're all right, Bob. So in and of itself, it'll be a project just loading them up to take them there because they're afraid of everything. Just want to make sure they can't go anywhere, but back in the cage or into this cage? Hey, guys, Jessica's here. Let's go this way. Let's go this way. Hey, guys. Hey. Whoa. Whoa. No, you okay? Mm. Hey, fucking head. Where's your hat? Get up, horsey. Happy you don't have any horsey left in him. They better have some left if you're going out to the woods with bears. Can you hear Bob? What's he doing? I walk away. He's going, mm -hmm. Listen. Bob is very crafty. He's constantly testing Dad. So Bob's the one that Dad's going to have to watch. He knows the bears, and they do have a mutual relationship. But they're still they're, they're wild animals, so you never know what could happen. Be careful. I'll be careful, honey. With a bear. I will. So you're taking the proper precautions, the safety and everything? I've always taken the proper precaution. I know deep down inside, she's a little concerned for me right now. She has some, some worry. All right, I got to go. I'm losing light. Give me a hug, Bob. I love you. Give me a hug, girl. And you know, when you say goodbye, you just hope that goodbye isn't goodbye. But these are bears, and anything could happen. Bye, Pappy. Bye, honey. Bye, bear. Hey, guys, come on. Come on, come on, let's go. Come on. Come on. Hey, 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 come on. Come on. Come on. It's all good, come on. Ah, it's a good boy. I know, Bob. You ever been out that door, have you, Screech? It's not a long walk from there to there, but to them, it is a long, long way. Up, 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 up. I thought Bob would go right in. He's just apprehensive to cross that, that threshold to go into the trailer. Bob's the leader here at the house, so if Bob's not going, Screech isn't going. Ah, oh, oh, oh. oh, it's a good boy, Bob. Now let's go. Now let's go. Come on. OK, come on, let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Here's some food. Come on, Screecher. It's OK. It's OK. Do it, big boy. Do it, big boy. Hey, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Love you. Be careful. If this is successful, um, I don't think that he's really prepared to let these bears go. These are his family. You know, he loves them. He has a great relationship with them. So I think he's going to have some things to think about if this is successful. Kind of a surreal moment that I'm actually on my way to the woods with two bears in tow. I know I'm going to have detractors. People say it can't be done. But who's really testing it? Nobody. Nobody's trying this. I don't think anybody really wants to take the risk, put the time into it, the energy into it, to, to answer that question. It's easier to sit back in your easy chair and go, no, don't think you can do that. Criticism doesn't bother me. It actually just pushes me a little harder. <laughs> Curious how they're doing back there right now. To get to our final destination, we have to leave paved roads, hit gravel roads, dirt roads, and no roads. We've got a buddy named Curtis. He's going to bring out a tractor. We're going to unhook the trailer from the truck, and he's going to have to take it back. Hey, 
boy. Straight back. Probably the toughest thing about taking my bears from an area that they know to the unknown is the fact that they can become stressed, they can become uncomfortable. Hey, boys. And I just get caught up in their anxiety. Hey, guys, look at this. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, guys. So I have to be very careful around them as I'm making this transition. Come on, come on, let's go. Come on, come on. It's OK, it's OK. Come on, it's OK. It's all good. That's what I mean. It's OK, bub. It's all good. It's all good. been a long day. Overwhelmed. You're a good boy, Screecher. You're a good boy. You did good, buddy. If they were stressed out, they would have been frothing at the mouth. They wouldn't be ready to eat. These guys came right out of that trailer. These are all good signs. Good signs for a good uh, transition. Easy, guys. Come on, hang on to these. Don't worry about that. It ain't going anywhere. All right. Thank you, brother. Ain't no problem. Be safe. All right. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm actually here. Can you hear that? It's nothing. Tomorrow, I'm going to take the bears out of the enclosure, and uh, I'm more scared than they are. Morning, boys. You sleep good? Look at you. You know something's up, don't you? Listen, I'm letting you out today, OK? But you got to listen to me, buddy, OK? I don't know what's going to happen from here on out. That's what I've been training you for, OK? Well, I'm a bag of mixed emotions right now. I mean, I'm so excited for Bob and Screech. The fact they're going to be out in this new habitat. This is the biggest area they've ever been in. This is as close to freedom as they've ever been. Well, check this fence, boys, and then it's showtime. Ooh, that's hot. I don't even know if, how this, they're going to process it initially when they're like, I'm walking a long way without seeing a fence. You hear that popping? You know that sound. Fence is hot. These are one and two jewel fence chargers, which are used on horses and cows. I have some that are solar powered. I have some that are ran by batteries. And I also have some that are hooked up to a generator, so I have them plugged direct. Man, they got to respect this wire. If Bob and Screech got out and they're outside of this habitat, anything could happen. I don't want Bob and Screech to get shot by somebody because they're scared. And I sure don't want Bob and Screech to hurt anybody. They breach that fence, I'm done. So I'm putting everything on the line right now. Let's do it, guys. Be good, guys. Just be good, OK? My concern is getting them out and how they'll react if they get scared at first. And uh, maybe take it out on me. Here we go. Let's go. Next time on Project Grizzly. This summer, I'm taking my bears, Bob and Screech. I'm going to try to teach them to live in the wild. You're free, guys. Today, I'm taking the first step in teaching my bears how to fish. It smells good, don't it? Come get you some of this. That's a good boy, creature. Bob, you're missing dinner, buddy. Dude, you have no coordination. What is wrong with you? Are you a bear? Now, this is me. Hey, hey, that's not a... I don't know what's wrong with Bob. Screech is progressing tremendously, but Bob is a big question mark right now. I've got to sleep somewhere. Come on, Bob. Dang, do it. Want to get up close and personal with Bob and Screech? Experience Project Grizzly in virtual reality on the Discovery VR app.